everybody. So blessed that you're joining us. This is um, Lecture 5 in um, Hebrew 102, and we're going to take it to another level tonight. And we're going to stick with these same um, five verses that I've already given to you. And so they're going to have to really focus on this, and hopefully you've got your handouts with you uh, because it's a little bit small, and so we're going to just really focus in on this tonight. And, you know, I'm having a bit of a hard time seeing it myself because I don't have really good light in here, but I'm going to read it to you best I can. And just, Bereshit bara Elohim et hashamayim et ha'aretz v'ha'aretz tohu va... Ah, forgive me. Let's see. V'ha'aretz hayata tohu v'avohu v'choshek al pene tohom. V'ruach Elohim merechefet al pene hamayim. Vayomer Elohim yahior vayihior. Vayar Elohim et haor kito. Vayabdel Elohim bin haor ubin hachoshek. Vayekro Elohim laor yom. La bela. I can't see. Is that it's a bob, isn't it? Yes. Bela bela choshek. Kara uh, Laila, Yom Achad. Sorry for that choppy, slow uh, reading, but it just was too small for me to see in here. And when I'm reading, I've got to read, and when I'm quoting, I can quote or stand back and memorize, but I can't do both at the same time. So what I've done here tonight for us is I'm laying out for you what you're going to start learning how to do. Okay? Because we said we're going to do. Um, a transliteration and then we're going to do a translation of it. But to really become good at translation you've got to learn how to get in here and parse your verbs. you got to learn how to recognize you know these various different uh, prefixes and suffixes uh, both on the verbs, on the adjectives and on the nouns. So that you can get especially when it comes to verbs at that three uh, uh, letter root, okay? Which primarily all verbs have. And so that's what I've done here tonight is I, I've gone through here primarily and I've done two things. One is I've sorted out the word from its prefix like Bereshit. Rashit is the Hebrew word for beginning. The be is a prefix that means in the. It literally would mean in, but as it's uh, a prefix to this particular word, it becomes in the. So that your translation isn't just in beginning. If you try to be too literal, it's in the beginning, okay? And that comes from a three letter consonant, rosh, resh, aleph, shin which means head, the top, head, okay? And then we're going to learn more about that as we go on. I, And then, of course, the next word is bara. We've gone over that. That's your first verb, and that verb is what? It's in the, it is in its classical, uh, perfect form or completed form, okay? So it's third person, masculine, singular, and that's really what we're going to learn. We're going to really learn to do that, and you're going to go really slow, uh, right now, but later on we'll pick up momentum. And so right now I'm going to spend all the time that we need to spend with these first five verses so you really learn how to translate, okay? And I know someone asked me about different tools to translate. Uh, one of them that's, that's free that you can get is that Blue Letter Bible. BLB on app, just go on your app store on your uh, smartphone and download that and you can get every one of the Hebrew words or Greek words, whatever the situation calls for. Here it's Hebrew. You get Genesis chapter 1. You can go in there. There'll be an interlinear uh, section for that. And then you can get each one of these words defined for you. Okay? Then, of course, uh, the next word that we come to that we need to parse out is Hashemayim. Okay? And, of course, you know Shemayim is actually the word for heaven. And ha, once again, is uh, the definite article 
Then the next word that we got to come to, that we got to parse out, we got is the ha'aretz. So one of the things that you're getting to recognize right off the bat, you're getting smarter, even though you're feeling dumber. You're getting smarter because you recognize the hey as the as the definite uh, article. And you understand what that means. It's always the. So you've got the down. You've got uh, the vob at the beginning of the word, uh, which you know both uh, primarily means and. It's the uh, conjunction, right? And. Mm -hmm. Then you've also got that prefix uh, le or la down, which is to or towards. Um, you've got that down. Look at those three. You see those prefixes over and over and over and over again. And I said bay, okay, the bait, okay, the, the ba, bait, uh, which is usually bait pata, sometimes bait gametes, which means in the. So you're already getting where you can get at the, at the <coughs> word to go look it up. Because if you try to look up in your lexicon or if you were just trying to go with a dictionary like I had to do when I first learned Hebrew back in 1982, you know, didn't have a computer, you just have your, you have your, um, Lexicon, you go looking up in the dictionary, you're not going to find a Bereshit. You're not going to find Bereshit. You're going to find Rashit. So you've got to be able to parse this thing out. Okay? Same thing with sh um, Shemayim. You're not going to find a Ha Shemayim in the dictionary. You only find a Shemayim. So you recognize the definite article, the conjunction, and some of the prefixes like the the lay, the lamed, and the bait. Okay? So, always emphasize what you're getting rather than what you're not getting. And before it's over, you are going to understand thoroughly these first five verses. Then we're going to do another five verses. And you're going to get those thoroughly. And we'll be able to pick up some speed as we go. But for right now, I'm going as slow as possible. And if you're already ahead of us, that's good. If these all make sense and you're just sitting around being lazy, shame on you. There's more to learn. And so, you know, stick with the program. Get it down. So the next one we come to, once again, is, is there it is. There's the, uh, 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 the conjunction, ve, vet, uh, and, and, and um, va, forgive me, vet, vav, and then the he. So, ve ha aretz, and the, uh, and then we got to, look here again and we're, we're going to parse out this next one and I know last time and a couple times we know that this we've emphasized the haya the to be verb and we know that this is the feminine form and we know why it's the feminine form and one of the things that we recognize about the feminine form is the gametes and the hay at the end and I call it apocopated and it's not an apocopated it's actually the justive form and, and the justive form is uh, really, is, it put emphasis on let it. it the justive is to let it be. Not to just to be, but to let it be. Okay? And um, also, uh, one of the other things I haven't really talked about, I'll talk about it more later, is strong verbs and weak verbs. And weak verbs have that have, um, uh, that end in a hey. Hey is a very weak consonant in a word and many times it will drop off and so you're like looking at a word and go hey where you know I'm trying to find my three consonant root here and there's only two because everything else I can identify as a prefix and a suffix where's my other letter well you learn what that reality of it is is there's only one of about four choices of letters and so it becomes really easy to piece together with familiarity and yod is like one of those really weak uh, consonants within a, uh, a weak verb. Hey is another one. Um, and so we'll talk about those later. I don't want to get into them all right now. I want to just do them as we encounter them. And I think you learn it better that way. And I, so I think that that's one thing I haven't really talked about at this point. So I just want to make mention of that. So when you go searching for this verb, right? You go look here and you got, wait a minute, I can't find all of my letters. It's confusing. What happened to all of them? I only can see two of them. Well, what happened was that the final hay dropped off and it was replaced then with a, the, the, the feminine ending for the uh, 
the uh, perfect um, for the perfect form, right? Mm -hmm. So I uh, I have to think about that too, because <laughs> I always look at it. I always just let it make sense. Okay, so the perfect means that the action is completed. Right. So and that's important to get this because otherwise it'll get confusing later on. It's not really past tense like we have in English. It just, the action is completed. So we mean that says it's perfect because it's completed. It's done. Okay? And then imperfect means it's in process. It isn't. In, it, it's, it's, it's incomplete. It's not finished yet. So it's future. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, and then also tonight, one of the bonuses is I want to teach you how to recognize the present tense. Okay? There is a present tense in Hebrew. So and we're, we're going to talk a bit about that so that you get introduced to it at least. Okay. Um, so um, then we, we're moving right along here, just breaking out once again on these two words on uh, Babahu and, um, on, yeah, on Babahu and uh, the Choshet. We're breaking out the conjugation, okay, just the Ba, and then Ba Ruach to get at just the Ruach, to get at the Bahu and Choshet. And, and the Ruach. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. I'm not losing anyone. Okay, we're just getting at what is the root. Because if you, once again, I want to say it again. If you went in the, in the dictionary and you looked up Beruach. Uh, you went and you looked up Beruach. You can't find the Beruach. You can find Ruach. So you've got to get rid of the Bob. you got to understand, wait a minute. That just says and. That's just a conjugate. Hope, conjugation. Hopefully everybody's getting that. That's so important. And so one of the things I, I'm, I'm now taking you to another place of doing is parsing out all of the words, not just the verbs, all the nouns and all the adjectives as well. And it's to see how simple it is to do. And you can just do it with a highlighter uh, when you have a conjugation of a word. And I'll say it again. Beruah uh, is a conjugation of two words. And those two words are and and the spirit, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the definite article is there implied with mm -hmm. the with the conjugation, right? Mm -hmm. Or the uh, the conjunction in this particular conjugation of two words, and the spirit of God merachefet. And so here we look at merachefet, and we've got to find out what is our. This is a tough one because this is a peel, and it's a unique peel. And there's a number of things about it, but we're not going to go into the, all the issues about why we, what's going on here with this PL. Um, but but this is, uh, you can see that the root word is racha, racha, racha. Okay, you've got to get at that. Well, what do you know about the ending there, that top? Where's that top come from? What's that all about? And forgive me, I I, I was saying Ted. I mean, I was, last lecture, I was calling a Tav a Tet. Look, I'll do that sometimes, and you just have to, you know, slap the computer so it can start <laughs> working properly again. But, you know, what is that, what is that all about? What does a Tav represent? A Tav Feminine. suffix represents what? Feminine, right? Feminine. Just like the, just like the hay, the garment's hay is an indic indication of feminine. There's some yeah. exceptions, but primarily... That's an indication of the feminine. So is the tav, not the tet, the tav at the end of the verb. So you've got a, you have to deal with both a prefix here and a suffix. Okay? Then the next word that we come to that's a conjugation is hamayim. So it's very important to me that you really are getting this, that you really are understanding how to parse out your verbs, how to parse out your nouns and your adjectives. And by and large, when it comes to nouns and adjectives, it's pretty easily, pretty easy. The hardest part to, to, to because it's just, it, it's other, it's just other words that are conjugated with that adjective or with that noun. The verbs are a little bit more challenging, but once you learn all of the verb forms, and there's not that many of them, just the imperfect verb form and the perfect verb form that I've already introduced you to. 
And I introduced them to you in a very difficult manner. I introduced them to you the hardest way to introduce them, and that is with the to be verb. It's the hardest. Uh, most people don't introduce uh, the um, the paradigm of the verb with the to be. They use something much more simple that would make make it standard because there are uniquenesses with the to be verb because it's a weak verb. And but those weak verbs follow that same kind of pattern. I know I'm talking over your head right now. You don't can't relate to it as much, but you will later. So you just file it away. What what I am going to do is I'm going to bring you back to the more classical strong verbs, which make up the majority of verbs, and then you memorize that that paradigm for the perfect paradigm for the imperfect for all the various different forms of second first first second first third person masculine feminine, and they all work the same way and and. Then, you know, I'm going to give you some exercises later on where you're basically taking a few very familiar words like, let's just say, for example, like bara or, or amar, because you see amar a lot, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, and you'll just, you'll write out the perfect form and you'll write out the imperfect form of it. And then you'll do, you know, four or five more verbs like that. And then you'll, you'll have it and you'll recognize it. It's just almost the same pretty much as writing out, you know, the consonants 20 times a day. You know, if you do that with your paradigm for the imperfect the paradigm for the verb, it's going to happen. You're going to glance at it and go, oh, well, that's a verb, and I see, the, I see the prefix, and I see the suffix. A lot of times what I'm doing is I, more, I'm more, I love mechanism more than I love memory. That's why I'm so good at chemistry, because I love mechanism. And so I like to just figure it out. So I just kind of read it and go, oh, well, that's past tense, obviously, okay? Uh, but you, that's later on. I had to learn the paradigm to start off with, and then it's just like you learn something, you almost like file it away. It, you, know, you know how that works with your brain? I learned the paradigms very, very well in 1982. But I didn't learn, uh, but that, I filed them away after that, and I went on and developed the Hebrew language. So can I write most of the paradigms? I think I can write them all, okay? I have to think about them, whether, whereas when I'm reading, it's a little bit different. So hopefully you can understand um, as I make an excuse for my many mess-ups, okay? But also trying to encourage you to get that, you know, established now and then build off of it, okay? So the next word that we see here is Bayomer. Bayomer is a very common word. Um, and so, you'll see it over and over and over again throughout the Bible. And he said, who said? God said. Because this is a book about God saying. Okay? Uh, once again, Amar is the way that it's the verb form. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that um, here in just a minute. Of how you know what, is, what does it really look like? What vowels should actually be there? And how do you know how to change these vowels? Because that's the hardest part about the paradigm. Isn't it putting on the prefix so much, right? And the suffix, because that's pretty easy. Especially like with the with the you know with the perfect form. Well even the imperfect form is pretty easy. Mm -hmm. What gets hard is now knowing what are the rules of how you change the vowels and why do you change the vowels? Because based upon whether it is a weak verb or a strong verb, of whether it's got it starts off with a hey or a yod, you know versus a guttural, you know, it, they, they have different rules that go along with it. And why then does that become important? Because then you got to get to a point where you can recognize the difference between the call, which is a simple verb form, and a nifel or a pl or a, or a hithfel. But it doesn't become that difficult because actually that word, pl, nifel, uh, hithfel, all of those are giveaways to the vowels. They're giveaways. We'll learn that later. Right now, you just got to learn the paradigm, the simple paradigm of the change of vowels. Just memorize them, and, and you'll see that there's some consistency there. Hopefully, you've already practiced and you see the consistency. You see that we're, you know, you get some, you get some changes there. Uh, but by and large, you can see a bit of a pattern. And so we'll talk more about that later. I don't want to overwhelm you with it because right now, my most important thing is I want to know that everybody is getting this and you can actually parse out for me those conjugations of two words and parse out the, the, um, 
the verb. So I know I'm being redundant, but I think it's important, um, especially from some of the text messages that I've gotten. Um, so then we go on down, Elohim, uh, and then here we are with uh, Yahi. I don't think I, I didn't get all the red in there, right? Sorry about that. I need a flashlight up here to see myself. <laughs> Break out my phone. <laughs> That'll help me. Yeah, so, we, yeah, we get, that's what I thought. I just, the yod is, the yod is, did, did get colored in red. And there, once again, you know, you, you look at that and it doesn't look like haya. At first, it doesn't look like haya. Mm -hmm. But you recognize right away the yod out in front. And because you already got the familiarity with the simple form of the imperfect, Okay, we know that's the third masculine singular imperfect form right there, mm -hmm. right? Cool. That yod was a giveaway, and that our hay in this, our hay dropped off at the end. Okay, and it is also we would also know that it's a jussive, and so you say, what is a jussive? A jussive said is let it be, rather than just to be, and there are you there as far as I know. Anytime you see a Joseph, it won't have a hay at the end, but that's not the reason that the hay dropped off. We'll talk about that more later in the future. And then once again, parsing out Vayahi, okay? What, recognizing what when you see an imperfect with a bob in front of it, when you see an imperfect with a bob in front of it, it's going to change it to perfect. Right. Mm -hmm. And when you see a perfect with a bob in front of it, it's going to change it to an imperfect. And it's the bob conversant. And so somebody said, "Why, you know, why can't we just do that differently?" Is that only with the vav pata? Is the vav conversive, right? The vav pata. It's usually going to have a pata. The vav conversive. Okay. There are times, however, that there are times that it doesn't have the, just the pata. Okay. okay? Um, primarily, if you see a vav. In front of a verb, it has changed it. Okay. okay. And I will look at those rules once again. But I am pretty sure that that holds true. Let's look at here. Let's look right here. Let's let's look at by Yomer. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he said, mm -hmm. and God said, mm -hmm. is that is that perfect or imperfect? Perfect. perfect. And God said, perfect, perfect. Okay. But what is the form? What's the form? Imperfect. It's imperfect. The form is imperfect. And in that instance, you have a pata underneath the vav. Okay? So, I think that, I think for the most part, when you see a vav, and let's just look at it here real quickly. Uh, when you see a vav in front of, the ver in front of a verb, it is going to have a pata. And it's going to change it from a perfect to an imperfect. Yeah. I'm trying to think of verbs that would have a schwa. And I just, right now, this is just not coming to me. So, it's a good question. I will look that up. Um, I think that, let's see. And then, once again, we just follow through here just in terms of really being, you know, Painfully clear. The next one we come to here is the um, Bayar. Okay? Bayar. And substance happened to our our three letter vowel again. Because here we got we got our imperfect form of the verb with a vowel conversive, right? Mm -hmm. But when we go searching for our three letter root, what's happened? Only two. That hay fell off again. Because it's just so weak. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't have enough strength to stick mm -hmm. around. When you start throwing some, you know, some new vowels in front of it, it just basically collapses. <laughs> it collapses because of the schwa. But also think about this. If you have resh, aleph, hay, mm -hmm. and you have no vowel, it's very hard to hear that. Yeah. So, if you look at this one, Bayar, how do you pronounce the hay? Bayar. 
How do you pronounce the head? So in some instances, it makes a lot of sense like that. There's just, it's silent. You can't even hear it. It's so weak, you can't hear it. Right? Right. So in some instances, there's some logic. Some other stuff is counterintuitive, <laughs> I'm telling you. But at any rate, you, you just have to memorize them. Fortunately, the things that are the exceptions that you have to memorize, they're, they're rare. So when, you're going, when we're going through this, I'm hopefully, I'm being wise enough, smart enough, insightful enough to give to you the, the majority of conditions, the 90% of what you're going to encounter Okay, so that you're really able going to you're going to be able to, to read mm -hmm. and you're going to be able to read and pronounce it mostly correct, if not perfectly correct, and um, or ninety percent correct. Let me just put it that way. That's probably a better way to say it. And you're going to know what you're reading because your eye is going to kind of fall on that three-letter consonant. It's going to fall on the root of that verb, and you recognize your conjugations and you've memorized your nouns. And your adjectives and your nouns are very close together. They are. Rosh. Huh? Rashid. You build off of those three-letter consonants. From the verb to the adjective to the noun. And we'll show you some of that. doesn't always hold true, but there are common roots for verbs and adjectives and nouns. Okay? Um, so, especially, you know, adjectives and nouns, but we'll, we'll talk more about that later. Okay, so then we got, you know, the ha'or, conjugation again. Vayavdel, okay, let's look at vayavdel. Uh, badal is the, is the root. And you'll always hear me go, badal. If I'm going to the root, you'll hear the pata. You'll hear the A, strong A sound. And it's usually always going to be, it's always going to be gametz, gametz, or it's going to be gametz, pata. And you, you, you'll get used to it, but... By and large, it's going to be gametz, gametz. Okay? And then sometimes it's going to be gametz, pata. And it might be, you know, just a little more gametz, gametz. Okay? And you just, you'll, in your memorization, you'll get used to that. And that's really where your simple cow perfect, which is the cow perfect form, is how you look it up in the lexicon or in the dictionary. In the cow perfect form, which is third person masculine singular. Mm -hmm. And it's got your three-letter consonant, and it's got no really big changes. Are there there there's sigillate nouns? Um, there's sigillate ver. Is there sigillate verbs? I'll have to think about that. And of course, when I say sigillate, I'm saying sigil, 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 right? But for the most part, it's just pata pata gamets or pata pata. I mean, gamets gamets or gamets pata. I don't think there's pata pata. Usually, it's always going to be gamets gamets under those three consonants. First two letters with the last consonant being no vowel underneath no vowel. it, which makes it a close closed vowel, a closed syllable. Close forgive me, closed vowel, closed syllable. Okay. Um. So, but that badal badal is the root. And um, and that is to divide, right? Badal is to divide. And then once again, a conjugation of hot war, and then a conjugation of uben, which is in between. And then a conjugation of hachoshek, the night. And then we're back to another verb, kara. The verb kara. Okay? And what does the verb present itself to us as? And imperfect, because you see the yod there. Yeah. And what does the vav conversive do? Makes, Makes it a perfect. perfect. So why couldn't we just had bachra? Because they don't want to make it an imperfect. Mm -hmm. Why can't we just had kara? Because then we wouldn't have had the end the. Right. Yeah. And this rule of the vav conversive is, is really, you know, just something that you have to accept. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Uh, Elohim Laor. There's our next conjugation, Laor. Uh, now we have once again two prefixes, the vav and the and the um, lamed, which is two or towards. And uh, uh, then kara again. So that's now kara is now in the perfect form, right? Mm -hmm. So yes. and 
and he called and God called the light or to the light mm -hmm. right and God called to the light yeah. day so he called the light day so he's speaking to the light mm -hmm. light you're going to be day mm -hmm. okay now why don't we have a what is it a little bit odd that we don't have an and for the call here and and to the darkness to the darkness so do we translate this and to the darkness call no, no because it's what a third person masculine singular mm -hmm. he so he is already there he mm -hmm. called mm -hmm. right yeah so right. it's so important for you to understand that that's where your pronouns are coming from that's how you know whether it's masculine, she called, he called, you called, they called, right? That's the, because that's going to be, you know, that's like, once again, I, uh, you almost could say a hidden conjugation. We really like these visible conjugations of the Vav and the Beit and the Lamed. But when you begin to parse, the, when you understand the paradigm of the verb, you've got, as it were, hidden conjugation. So here it is, just kara in its perfect, mm -hmm. um, simplest form. Call literally means simple or easy, mm -hmm. um, and so it's in its, its easiest form. And we know that it's a third person masculine singular, mm -hmm. so that we can say when we get to a situation like this, and to the darkness he called. That's a literal translation. Except for that in English that doesn't make a lot of sense to us to go into the darkness he called. We would say, and the dark and, and he called the darkness. We just change it around a little bit. And he called the darkness. But me we're saying exactly the same thing. Okay. It's just that we don't to the darkness thing, you know. Mm -hmm. That's already implied. We understand that without saying that. Whether we realize that that's what we're thinking and that's what we're saying or not, that's really you know what we're actually intending to communicate right hopefully that makes sense and then you know the very familiar once again um, uh, this is this is the lost hay and you could say it's in the justice form because it looks like it's in the justice form but it doesn't it's not in the justice form so sometimes sometimes justice is just like are you kidding me because now it's just of here and it's not just of here. Well, why not? Let me look at that again. So think about that. Because now it's not, and let it be evening and let it be morning. It's, and, and the evening and the morning. Okay, so we got, and it was evening and it was, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, not, and it will be evening and it will be morning. No. That's why we got a Bob Conversa. Because when will it be? Because I thought we just got finished with it. And so, okay, I hopefully that I, I'm hope I'm hopeful that I'm really getting this across. And and maybe for some of you it's too redundant. And I keep saying the same thing over and over again. But be patient so that everybody can get this. And you slow down a little bit more to make sure that you can get it. Um, for me, this would be the best thing I could do for you in a final. It's this right here. So it looks just like this. Where I want you to parse out for me. I want you to show me just the root. Okay, I want you to show me the noun, the adjective, and the verb. So if I gave you five verses and I said, I want you to show me the just show me the noun, the adjective, and the verb, then this is exactly what you would do. You would just go through here and you would break out all the conjugations. And then what I'd want you to do is I want you to come down here because you're going to start doing this. You're going to start building your vocabulary. Now I already told you to start building your vocabulary, but now I'm going to have you build your vocabulary in a little bit more organized fashion. So we're going to put in here the imperfect verbs. Action is incomplete, which is the same as saying future tense. And we're going to list all of our verbs that we had up here. And we're going to list them as we discovered them, right? So all I did was go up here and I cut and I pasted, right? Writing them out is a very good thing to do because being able to read and write Hebrew. Listen to me. Four years from now, stick with this and you will be able to boast that you can read and write Hebrew. I mean, come on. 
I, I remember talking to a guy one di day. He was so agnostic and atheist and didn't want to hear anything about the Bible. And he said, you know what? I'm going to listen to you, to what you have to say about the Bible, because you believe in it enough to learn the language that it was written in. You know, that wasn't too long after I had started learning Hebrew. And the Lord used that to speak volumes to me. So you really believe in this. You really, really believe that God wrote this. Well, then why can't you take the time to learn the language? Are you stupid or something? No, no one's that stupid. It's just time and task. And they say people that are good at math can't learn languages. I don't believe that. Or the people that are good at languages aren't good at math. I, I, you know what? I don't believe that one moment. I, that's overgeneralization. Anybody can learn a language. It's just, you know, some of us can do things that we don't even have to think about. I could do chemistry almost without thinking about it. I've just got a natural gift for it. So I, we love doing things we don't even have to work at. I could just pick up musical instruments, you know, and I, enjoy, I could play around with them. I didn't have to hardly work at it, and I could do them. And we really like doing stuff that comes natural. Well, languages don't really come natural for the most of us, and we've got to really, truly work at it. But they say that if you work at a language, you will not go senile. That's a good therapy. Okay, so that's a good promise. So here we go. And all I want you to do is to come right over by the imperfect. I want you to break out perfect form. And that's all I did here. Um, I, I, I don't think I left. Yeah, see, I broke out the perfect form. I can't hardly see the thing. Okay, all I did was, yes, I brought it over and put the, the, the correct vowels underneath it. And once again, it's either going to be a gomets pata or a pata pata. Okay? Gomets, gomets. Huh? Gomets, gomets. Or it's going to be, go forgive me, a gomets pata or a gomets, gomets. So we got it pretty much divvied up here, don't we? Gomets pata, gomets, gomets, gomets pata, gomets, gomets. That's right. 50 just so happy to be that our verb, our, our vocabulary for verbs, and every one of you should have this. You should know that amar is to say, ra is to see, badel is to divide, kara is to call. I mean, it's just too easy, right? Mm -hmm. So then let's also now come down here and let's go ahead and list our perfect vowels that we had. And we had two perfect vowels. I left out... Uh, Vowels. Verbs. Sorry. You know what I mean. I'm glad you guys know what I mean. Because I'm doing I do that kind of stuff all the time. Okay? The only thing I'm not I haven't ever done it that I know of is call an olive like a cough or something, you know. But um I don't I don't know what's my problem. It's, it, and I don't think anybody else but the word does either. So here we're gonna put in our perfect forms. I did not put in the PL verb. That's the only thing I didn't put down here. I did not put in the PL verb. If you missed the PL verb on the test, I would let you slide. That's going to be extra points on the test. I'm just such a nice teacher. Tell you what the final's going to look like, what you can do, what you can't do. Um, and we got four more lectures to get ready, as well. So we're not obviously we're going to be moving on to the next five verses, and you're going to have to come back to this. This is going to be your this is what you're going to have to remember, but. This is pretty much going to be it because our majority of our lecture is going to be here. So, um, how many minutes do I have? Five more minutes. Five more minutes. Now, what I want to do is I want to just jump right down here. I want to show you how to do a present tense. And you'll see these. And the nice thing about present tense is, by and large, it keeps the same vowel pattern. Yippee! <laughs> okay? What happens, what we're going to do is we're going to take a mar, which is... Uh, say or utter usually it's say and we're going to go down here and we're going to put in a whole involved and we're going to put in a uh, sere under the min so we're going to basically take the amar right we're going to get rid of the vowels throw them away grab a hold of gamets pata chunk them okay <laughs> we're going to we're going to stick in a whole involve. Uh, are you up close on this for me? Yeah. We're going to stick in a whole involve and we're going to add a sere. See that? That's the way you do it every time. That's the way you see it every time. See that? 
regardless of the verb? Yep. By and large, this is a good rule right here. Okay? There's probably some exceptions. Sure. Okay. And so what I'm going to show you now is Ani Ani Omer I say. I say. It's perfect. Or I said. This is perfect for him, right? Mm -hmm. Ani Omer. I said. Now you can start having a lot of fun with this because now I'm going to show you how to actually do all do this um, in terms of all the various different um, you know masculine singular masculine feminine second first second third person and so you can do this with any with any uh, with any um, with any verb okay so and we're going to use the, we're going to use the um, and I didn't put it up here forgive me but we're going to use the verb halak. Halak is a verb that you have not learned yet. Okay? Halak means to walk. Okay? Very common in the Bible. Walk is a big point in the Bible. Halak. And halak is, um, uh, it would be, I can't really see this, sorry, but it should be hey, uh, gametz, lamed, pata, uh, kof. Halak. Hey, Lamed, Kaf. Hey, Lamed, Kaf is your vowel. Mm -hmm. I mean, your consonant. And your vowels are, should be on this, comments, Pata. Halak. And then what we're going to do is you look at all the different forms here now and you're going to see some things that are very familiar. Ani holak, ani holek, rather, ani. I can't see it. <laughs> and then here's where your verbs are going to change when you start, you know, adding in now the various different feminine form because you're going to put in, you're going to put in a final um, tab. Mm -hmm. So it's ani holeka. Let me see. Is that a shigol? Ani yes. holeka. Yeah. Ani holeka. Ani holeket. So, what I want you to do with this now is I want you to go in here and I want you to do a transliteration of all of these. And I'm not going to sit here with my flashlight and, and, and pronounce them all for you. I will make them bigger. And I'll go through them because I can read all of them, obviously, <laughs> if I could see it. <laughs> um, but I want you to do a transliteration just like you've been doing. Practice that. Then next lecture, I will read them out loud for you to make sure that you're tran that you're pronouncing it right as well. But remember, if you'll always do your 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 syllable consonant vowel or consonant vowel consonant syllables, you're going to be pronouncing it pretty close. And that's what you're training in. You're training. We are still actually doing the same thing today that we were doing um, moving into like the second and third lecture. What we're doing is we're continuing to pronounce the sound mm -hmm. over and over again. That's what we want to perfect. We're not speaking it to and conversing with as a language. Most languages, what you'd normally do with a language, we're basically reading the Bible. So our interaction with the Bible, so we've got to say it out loud, consonant vowel, consonant vowel, consonant vowel, or consonant vowel, consonant vowel, consonant, however it goes, um, or appears, pronounce that as those individual syllables, the sound is going to be really close, never forget the impact of a second schwa, and how it affects the syllable, how the um, accent on the final syllable, and 90% of the time you're going to be pronouncing it right, okay? So, you know, if I had memorized that, I could go through here and I could give it to you out of memory. However, I'm going to read this. So I'm actually going to look at it, and in, in my mind, I'm doing the I'm doing the two syllable I'm doing the single syllable two consonant vowel. Um, 
transliteration. It's just that as soon as I start doing it, it's familiar to me, and so I can go ahead and say the word. Because mm -hmm. I've said the word so many times over these many years now. And so that's what you're going to do in four or five years from now. Same thing's going to happen to you. You're going to look at it. You're going to start breaking it down as you've always been doing in your transliteration. And then, oh, you're going to know that word, and it's just going to flow right out. Okay? Now, real quickly, any questions? Um, so, like you said last week, first uh -huh. thing is to transliterate and then pronounce out loud and then translate. So we're going to do that with that chart right there. Yes, you are. With this chart, you're going to do a transliteration. Mm -hmm. You're going to tran you're going to pronounce it out loud, and you're going to translate. Okay. 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 And single verb perfect form is what you always want to have in front of you, and I didn't give it to you, and it's just simply, it is simply this. Okay. And I and I write it out. And this is a word that you're going to basically see over and over again. So that's it. Hala. 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 Mm hmm. That's your, that's your perfect form right there. Okay, any other questions? I actually have my phone with me and I'm getting no text. Well, there's, there's about a minute lag. On the oh, there video. is a minute lag? Mm -hmm. So everybody's having to wait? Yeah, I'm getting no text from anybody. Hold on. you guys see you next lecture. Hold on. Yeah, I just had a flow out.